Hello, in this module I'd like to introduce the list data structure and the LApply function. I find that many newcomers to R are frequently confused about the list data structure and what it's used for. To motivate uh, the, the purpose of a list, let me show you a couple of examples. I'm going to paste in some uh, vectors here. We have four of them. Two of them are character, surname, and measles, and two of them are numeric, num of child and ages. What we'll do later or momentarily is to combine these into a list and, and you'll see how convenient that can be. But for now, let's, let's try to combine some of these vectors into a larger vector and see what happens. If I attempt to combine surname with measles, in this case, everything kind of works like we expected. Both surname and measles are character vectors. If we try to combine num of child with ages, we also get back a vector that we expected. But what happens if we try to combine num of child with surname, for example? R will still do this. It's, it's not like this is illegal or a problem, but basically R doesn't know how to respond to this because vectors are required to have the same data type for each element. So if for no other reason uh, than this, the list data structure is available to accommodate elements of differing data types, uh, heterogeneous element types. And so what we could do uh, is make a list out of these existing vectors. We use the list function to do that. Surname um, of child ages and measles. Okay, so if you use the str function, the string function, which is uh, an excellent way to inspect any object in R, it will verify that we now have a list of four elements. List of four. Uh, the first element is a character, the second is numeric, the third is numeric, and the fourth is character. So if I type the list name, we get back all the information that's stashed in that list. This is usually when newcomers start to become confused because they don't understand why R is listing a double bracket one and then a one, a double bracket two, then a one, a three, and so forth. The idea is that a list element can have any number of sub-elements. An element in a list can actually be another list. We won't go there because that, that really is confusing. We'll just, we'll just keep it simple for now. But if you've used vectors before, you may be tempted to index into a list by using the single bracket notation. And that's not a bad idea. What we could do here is type family one, left bracket, uh, one, right bracket. And what do we get back? Well, we, we sort of get back something that we expected we see that Jones is the first element, but we see this double bracket thing. What we've done here is we've sliced off that element. And if we had named our elements, which is something that we'll do momentarily, it would make a lot more sense. But uh, for now, if we wanted to get the exact and only the, the uh, value of Jones, we would have to use the double bracket notation. Think of the double bracket notation as being more targeted. And here we get back just Jones, okay? Now, if we wanted to get back, let's say, the ages of the children, we could type in double bracket three. Look what happens if we type in single bracket three, okay? We get the element name, if, if it were in fact there, and we get its value. So if you want to work with the specific value of a list element, use the double bracket notation, okay? Um, that's one way to look at it. Now, if I were creating a list, if, if I have the ability to create the list, I will always name it. I'll always give each element a name. So I'll simply do it just like this. It's very easy to do. Now, I'm giving the element name uh, the name of the respective vector here. You, you could name these whatever you want. It's completely arbitrary. And I think you'll agree this will make more sense. So if we type str 
family one, notice it's a bit more informational. We still have a list of four, and each element now has a name. If I type the list, notice now that we have dollar surname, dollar gnome of child, uh, dollar ages. So this becomes more intuitive. This is more in line with what a human would like. So I can now address each element using this dollar notation. So if I just want the ages, I just type family, one dollar ages, and measles. Right? So this is much more intuitive than working with unnamed elements. I will say that if you're a programmer, as you will see momentarily that writing for loops, you typically don't use the names, you would use the element numbers. So there is some advantage to working with a list that does not have names.